Good afternoon everybody, welcome from Mission 10X. I take this opportunity to thank IITB for their magnanimity in helping us being here and also uh, allowing us to be part of this entire mission. I am very happy to be here and on behalf of my colleague, I will take you through this entire wonderful session of Mission 10X starting today with the title, Moving from Teaching to Facilitating. I would also like to mention that for this particular program, around 1000 participants that, who, uh, that are uh, in this particular workshop, a few of you are also mission connections. So this is going to be interesting to be with you from a distance. I would also request uh, at the onset the coordinators to kindly help us. There will be a certain uh, time when we would expect a little bit of cooperation from your side. So we will keep you updated on that and uh, as and when required we will also put you through some of these uh, notices that we would like to give to you on and off. To begin with this is the agenda for today. Uh, partly first we shall uh, move from reflection on existing of our classroom practices. I will take you through some uh, videos, subsequently I will, I will uh, stop the video at one particular point and then take you on a reflection trip. Subsequently certain visuals will be shown to you and a small little instruction will be given. Moving from there we will understand what is the nature of this 21st century learner whom we are trying to know. Moving from there on, we will have an understanding about who the facilitator is and what are the characteristics of the facilitator such that this facilitator becomes learner centric. Subsequently, a few ideas will be given on the home assignment which is also part of your manual but also which is going to be available to you on email for today. So to begin with, I will uh, take you through the reflection of existing classroom practices. For this I request you to watch a video and uh, for this particular video the audio is a little bit of a concern so I would request you to pay attention to this video very thoroughly. Subsequent to that we will try to see what this video is all about. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, for many of you who must be wondering, this is very abrupt. I am deliberately doing this because I want you to take you through some particular aspect of what this movie was all about. And then I will play the remaining part of it. I have paused it at a very appropriate place. I will then take you through it at a subsequent time. Let us now focus what is it that we were doing over here. This particular video is a very big way of identifying and understanding what is it that is the conventional system of education that we are probably trying to look at or rather should I say experiencing right now. This is not about certain particular colleges or schools that are in such a kind of a system but we are looking at an overall trend of education that is happening with us. Let us look at the movie and try to highlight each of these points which was also visible in the movie that we just saw right in the beginning. Focus on memorization of discrete facts. Part of this movie right in the beginning when they showed where the children were parroting all alongside that is one of the ways which this particular idea is very predominantly shown in the kill. Two, the conventional system also highlights what is known as passive learning where children are supposed to be or learners are supposed to be like sponges or empty slates wherein the teacher's job is to go and pour in some data and where they are supposed to absorb that data. Nothing much is happening from the learner's side other than the fact that they are sitting and taking down as also you saw in this particular movie that they are just strangely sitting over there and only writing down things. We also saw that learners in the conventional system work very, uh, they work in isolation and sometimes even individually. Part of this movie where the teacher is also drawing the, uh, uh, the partition between two students, where two students are not allowed to talk among themselves. This is also a guarantee that the conventional system is very, very isolating and individualistic where as so far as learning is concerned. Part of the movie also suggested where every time a teacher would go in and move out and the st that the students had barely anything to say, that was all about being teacher centric. Did we also notice that when the student had lots of questions at one particular moment, the student's mouth was sealed completely and also at a certain particular time, that student had lots of questions in his mind and we, when he removed it all out, when the teacher sealed the mouth, what did the teacher do? And the teacher just spins them outside the classroom. This is very teacher centric in the sense that teacher would rather discourage any kind of interaction or any kind of collaborative work that happens in the classroom. This subsequently brings us to the next idea of our uh, point in the conventional system that students have very little amount of freedom in terms of what they want to learn, how much they want to learn, when they want to learn or any kind of freedom which has got to do with the biggest decision of their life and that is the decision whether they want to learn or they don't want to learn. I don't know how far we could possibly give that much of freedom in terms of wanting our students to decide what they want to learn and how much they want to learn. We can definitely make a pathway to ourselves and in our system where we can give them some amount of control and some amount of freedom to understand how much and what they want to learn. Also, let us move. Is teacher always the judge of the student's work? Yes, in the conventional system, teacher is always the one who will probably assess the learners, how far they have been successful, what is their performance rating, 
Ma management also intervenes, but most of the time the teacher is the one who is the sole assessor of a student's work. In this particular movie, we also saw that there was this one, this one particular student who was very keen on doing many other things. He was a little distracted. He possibly did not want to do rote learning, which many of the other students were doing. But that kind of a student diversity was also not encouraged in this the conventional system of which the movie was a glimpse of. Also a corollary of the very first idea which we just focused that is on memorization of facts. We also that sometimes the teacher is also focusing on the lower levels of learning which Dr. Sahana had also touched upon yesterday. Basically in the conventional system since memorization of fact is more important, most of the time we are looking at knowledge comprehension and at max sometimes application levels to which we would want our students to reach. I would now take you from this particular idea to a set of certain pictures which I want all of you to see. And at the end of these pictures, I want all of you to answer one question. I will show you the question first. I will show you the pictures later on. And then I request the coordinators to take note of the fact how many of your participants have an answer yes or an answer no to this particular question. So I request the coordinators to be alert and after the pictures are shown, I will give you roughly about a minute or so. You are then requested to collect these answers, a majority view from your uh, center and project it onto the screen where you can write over there yes or a no and then we will move forward. So the question is right here. My question is, is this close to reality today? I want you to now look at the pictures. I have three in number. You can see one by one and then you can answer this question. I would expect the coordinators to help me out here to get the responses. Is this readable to all I hope? This is my second one. I will read it out in case if it is not clear. This is child telling to his mother but the mother is all about storytelling at night. So the child says to the mother, I am too tired to listen to a story tonight mom. Just email something and I will read it tomorrow. There is this third picture, I will show you now. Again to many of the centers where this visibility might be a problem. There are two friends who are sitting at home and this is what one friend is telling to the other friend. My dad's teaching me how to mow the lawn, fish and use the grill. I am teaching him how to Google, text and use an iPod. Now I want you all and with the help of the coordinator to flash your answers and I will wait for a minute. Please type it so that we can get it on our screens here. Is it close to reality today, yes or a no? I just want the majority pulse from each of your centers. Yes, Amritapuri, just write your answer, yes or a no. Okay. Bandera has given an answer already. Okay. Amritapuri also has an answer, very nice. Okay, yes, Amrita again. Okay, everyone says yes, 13 say yes. Fantastic, Nirma, thank you. Okay, MGM also, your answer is here, very nice. Okay, VNIT Nagpur also, we have your answer. Good job. Yes, few more centers. Currently, I have SGSIT Indor. I have Bandera. AAC Amritapuri, COEP, NIT Suratkal, Nirma, Vellore Institute, VNIT. What about the other centers? Okay, SICSR, Pune, Symbiosis, answer is yes, okay. Fantastic MGM, very precise answers, 35 no, 5 yes, very good. Okay, so Government Engineering College, Trisur also has their answer with us. Sihagad, yes. 
Okay, so this is more or less what we are looking at. I am very interested in MGM Engineering College which has maximum participants saying no and the many of the others uh, across colleges have said that yes, this is very close to reality. Why is it that I did something like this over here is I want you to also reflect on what kind of learners we have as of today and I welcome you to the world of the 21st century learner and your answers are supporting what I have to say over here that the learner that we have in our classroom is somebody whom we really either are not recognizing completely or are possibly wanting to recognize but we do not know how we are supposed to do that. So I welcome you all to the world of the 21st century learner in a classroom which is conventionally led. Now there is therefore a kind of dissonance between what the system is offering but what the consumer wants or what the customer wants. Now if our system is like that and if our customer or consumer of knowledge is of the 21st century learner, let us see what is the characteristic of this kind of a learner. I will take you quickly to this particular idea. Who is this 21st century learner? Many times we see different kinds of languages they use and that is what is known as their lingo which probably even at many of your colleges they would have certain pe peculiar lingo, certain messages that they have on the text, great is lit written as GR and the numerical number 8, tomorrow is 2, the numerical 2 and morrow, this is their kind of language which probably thanks to SMS system that is what we have it, but there is something much, much more than we are aware of. They are also very goal oriented and multitaskers. You ask them to do one thing, they will probably, you, you will probably see them doing 10 other things at the same time. We also see that the way they probably consume information is something which we never probably consume. More so because today they have multiple mediums through which they can gather information. A very peculiar trend which is emerging now and which is also referred to the generation of 21st century learners and they are said to be digital natives or what is known as not next gen but it is net gen where an internet is what is understood to be the active use of these learners wherein their technological use is so immense that probably sometime or the other there is a gadget which is there in their hands or if not anything they would probably be what is known as surf or surfing addicts which is a new trend as of now. 80% and that is what one of the research is also highlighting, 80% of our learners are not auditory learners which means that the stimuli for learning for them comes in many other different forms than just auditory way. Overall and across many of the workshops where Mission 10x has gone and we have try to understand what is it that the classrooms are projecting as of now. We have also understood that today's learners is highly outspoken and very demanding. Whether it is in terms of infrastructure from the college to the fact that the knowledge that they want from their teachers and not just knowledge but what is known as insights from their teacher. They no longer want to be receiving only information but they want to understand the insights and principles about whatever their teacher is saying to them. So if this is the 21st century learner, what is it that a conventional system needs to move forward to? I will now show you the re remaining part of the clip and I want you to see in what way this association can happen. I will start the movie right from the, way, the point at which I had left. It is a small part. <laughs> Okay, so that was the remaining part of the movie which I was, uh, I was keeping you away from and since the time that we saw the first part subsequent to understanding what is the 21st century learner, 
showing you this little particular remaining part of the film i want you to understand that maybe it is time now to look at the different kind of system that we can bring into our classrooms and maybe this is why we called this as the emerging system or what is the evolutionary and a new kind of a system which is not radical which is not different but it is just so much so a little more away and in a little more different way that we are going to look at part of this particular film which was a very short span which you would have seen there is something what was the students did and therefore try to learn from doing it in this new emerging system of what we understand as the learning paradigm where the focus is not on how well i am teaching but how well the student is learning i am looking at helping the students to learn by doing it so my first point from the remaining part of the film is to focus on it is not just important that the students know about the information but the fact that they are also learning by doing as you would have seen this particular small child has understood how possibly flowers bloom not just by growing but also looking in the direction of the sun in which it has to move towards subsequently the highlight in the emerging system also or the learning paradigm is also towards active learning in active learning we do things but they are necessarily not activity unlike the part in which where the students are only passive listening here learners engage into the idea and into the content which the teacher is providing the engagement in the content need not necessarily be in terms of being physically involved into it but the fact that what is happening right now also that you all are all sitting across the centers through this videos through this visuals when we are trying to engage you or yesterday when we try to involve you through clickers and today morning when dr fatak engaged you into the quiz these are all different ways in which you all are engaging into the content you all are not necessarily getting up and doing things but this is what we understand as active learning where you are making students be into the content rather than be passive observers of facts i have highlighted that particular word i will tell you why i have done that subsequently let us look at the third characteristic of this learning paradigm wherein we see that the learning that happens happens collaboratively and it happens cooperatively students no long lo no longer learn by way of isolating themselves from their peers and from their classmates as you would have seen in this remaining part of the clip that i had shown you that most of them are also supporting the learner even when the learner was hesitating a little we did see that they all kind of encouraged him and wanted him to try out and find out how plants grow the scenario today is different whether you are in iit vit or any other place that you are in today's learners domain is far more than the four rooms of a four walls of the classroom today students are collaborating across countries and across continents and that is a way in which we understand that today our classroom is just not a classroom but it is a global classroom collaboration has moved so much far more exponentially than what it was probably two decades ago the fourth kind of a uh, fourth kind of characteristic of this 21st century classroom i would if i am allowed to say that is that it has become more student centric if everybody at iit bombay in conducting this particular workshop is very focused on allowing interaction that is simply because this need not be even when it is an through an ict we do not want it to make it absolutely monologue and it did not be only instructor led but it has to be a two way communication and dialogue rather than a monologue and that is why today's system is more focused on making the entire learning process through student centricity wherein therefore the teacher is no longer the sage on the stage but also becomes the facilitator we will talk more about this in subsequent slides here we also saw that students are allowed a great deal of freedom to experiment to move to talk to interact to dialogue across peers and across the facilitator as well so this is in the new system or the learning paradigm students are also allowed a lot of freedom 
in terms of how learning can be influenced therefore. Who else evaluates other than the teacher? Well, in the learning centric or the student centric system, we have the student who evaluates his own performance or her own performance along with the fact that even peers evaluate what is also now as peer tutoring or peer instruction and teacher is just not the only sole evaluator of the student's performance. Interestingly, in this new kind of a system or the learning paradigm, instruction also addresses or tries to address student diversity. What this means, we will take you through. I would rather be very mysterious at this point of time because subsequently the other lectures will unfold this whole idea and I would like to keep this as a mystery as of now and maybe it will intrigue you so much that uh, it will be interesting again tomorrow for you. And subsequently, learning levels that are aimed in this kind of an emerging system which is Tudor centric and where learning happens actively, we are looking at higher levels of thinking which again Dr. Sana took you yesterday through. And therefore, we will move forward how all this when put together, we will make a difference to the emerging system. I will now take you through this whole idea about teacher as a facilitator because if my classroom is 21st century and if my classroom has 21st century kind of learners, what is it that the facilitator needs to do? A facilitator is somebody who makes things easy and who provides as I have understood over here and written and you can see it on your slide that it is not about transferring merely facts into some empty vessel, but it is about creating a learning environment where not the covering of the syllabus happens, but the uncovering and discovering of the syllabus happens or learning I would say. I will let you read this particular slide and uh, maybe I will read with you. These are very, very self-evident kind of points. In the 21st century, if learning is to be active and it has to be student centric, the teacher's role as a facilitator will involve all of this characteristic. Firstly, consistently maintain ground rules, that is how teams and within the classroom people will function, including the teacher herself. Pays attention to details that will create a conducive learning environment, something as simple as a seating arrangement in the classroom is mindful of timing issues, is objective, non-judgmental and non-intimidating in her behavior, in his behavior with her students, tries to elicit response and encourage interaction at every point and guess what, this time it is also simply not from those eager ones who are sitting right in front but also from those uninterested, indifferent and probably even the skeptical students in your classrooms. The final four points about what a facilitator also needs to do or will do in this new kind of a classroom is be prepared with tools to keep the learning happening, whether it is in terms of anecdotes, in terms of stories, in terms of animation, any which way. Probably tries to also rephrase questions just so that the other students also participate into it and is very aware of the verbal and non-verbal cues. Having said that these are some of the things that they do, also let me quickly take you to what a facilitator would not do in the classroom and I would let this particular screen speak for itself, maybe about a minute you can take to read it. I am sure many of us would be possibly having practiced all some such characters at some point of time. I would want to leave you with one particular slide. And again, I request the coordinators to help me out across. I will show you one slide and given the idea of a facilitator, I want all of you to think that having done this kind of a role sometime or the other in your classroom, what is this one metaphor which you will possibly give yourself as a facilitator? As a facilitator, you do many things. But in doing these things, there is a particular metaphor which you can easily put onto yourself. I will show you a screen slide on which I have highlighted some particular roles. I want each center to choose one for itself, but I request the coordinator to take at least four such participants views and type it like you did last time. So that many of us over here should understand what are the typical roles as a facilitator you would like to take. Please watch the screen. 
request the coordinator to take at least four responses from your center and type it so that we can see it over here. As a facilitator, what is the role that you would like yourself to see as? Which metaphor would you give yourself? These are 10 titles which I have listed over here. Please pick anyone. All of you are supposed to pick one, but the coordinator will pick only four. Type it and put it onto our screen. Yes, I can read it also. The first one is culture. The other one is gardener. The third is a parent. Fourth is a counselor. Fifth is a tailor. Sixth is a friend. Seventh is a coach. Eighth is an architect. Ninth is a film director. And the last one is a catalyst. Which metaphor would you choose for yourself in your role as a facilitator? Yes, so I already have VNIT Nagpur. Can the coordinator at least give me four, four of the roles? Yes, AAC, you can type your answers. Okay, catalyst, friend, gardener and architect. Okay, catalyst. Okay. So far from three colleges, catalyst is one answer which is commonly coming across. Thank you coordinators, you all are doing a wonderful job. It's helping me so much. Very nice. Architecture again. Architect, sorry. Is helping me a lot. Okay. Coach is another uh, common uh, role that I am seeing as a facilitator which you would like to take. Wonderful. And okay, after a long time, somebody from COEP and Periyar, they think, yes, okay, ASC, very nice. VNIT, can I have some more from your side? Okay. This is very interesting. I am getting few good responses, but catalyst I am seeing across centers that is one which is coming as one of the predominant view of yourself as a facilitator. I am very glad that you all are giving me this response. It has made me think a little more on how I would want to move forward. Keeping this in mind, I will take you through the next slide wherein it talks simply about keeping in mind what we just did today. So you all are the chosen ones and you all are here to make a difference in bringing out and evolving this new learning paradigm that is focused on active learning, student centricity and bringing students to higher levels of thinking by understanding the diversity that we see in our students. I will break here leaving you with one simple assignment which has been given to you through your email and the coordinator has got it. I request all of you to do that. It is, a, it is a very simple and it is an assignment on reflection about what we did today and about you personally and your classroom. So I expect all of you to take it at home and do at home or maybe anytime, but I request that all of you do it. If there is any queries, if you would like to post, we will take it tomorrow or you can post it to us. And thank you for being a very wonderful audience. We will see you tomorrow again with another set of interesting idea and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much.